Hello and welcome to uh, our show. Marijuana Resolve uh, is, a, is a, a conversation about marijuana in the state of Vermont. Today we have with our co-host Daryl Pillsbury, special guest uh, Dan Lefkowitz, who is the co-host of a, uh, a new show for BCTV called Things You Can't Talk About. And we thought that since uh, well, marijuana is such a uh, such a uh, a red flag type of a word, that we'd have Dan on today and and talk with him about marijuana. Welcome, Dan. Thank you. Thank nice you to for have having you, me. Dan. Thank you. Glad you could come. Um, <clears throat> why don't you uh, tell our audience a little something about what it is and who you're working with in this show? Uh, things you can't talk about, and in fact, the next show that you've already mentioned to us. Can you tell us something about that? Sure. Well, it's called Things You Can't Talk About, and um, sort of the idea is to talk about things that people don't talk about, say marijuana or issues that come up that are uncomfortable for people or aren't, aren't mentioned. And so we thought of doing a show about marijuana because it seems like you know, to talk about marijuana, you have to talk about it in hushed whispers, and to mention that you actually um, use marijuana is even a deeper secret. Uh -huh. And we just wonder why this is so. I mean, if it's a plant, you know, it's a plant that grows just like any other plant, and yet for some reason it's declared illegal and that you can't grow it, you can't consume it, you can't use it for any reason. And we thought that <coughs> it was just, it would be interesting to look and explore why you can't talk about it and then talk about the thing that you're not supposed to talk about it to open it up kind of to more discussion. Is the program uh, in progress now or is it ready for air it to be set into the air schedule? Well the one about marijuana is done I believe it's been edited it's at BCTV right now and at some point it will be aired um, and I believe if you go to their website it'll be on the on-demand um, uh, thing that they have up there. That's right. Which is BrattleboroTV.org. <coughs> Right, and uh, they used to have BCTV, I think, also could probably go there. Tell us who you work with, with it, on this type of, uh, of a show. Well, uh, my um, principal conspirators are um, <laughs> Chris Grodke who, and Leith LePage, who work on iBrattleboro, and Chris has right. been doing a lot of the editing and camera <laughs> work, and Leith has been doing some stuff with us as well. Right. In fact, it was you two folks that interviewed me back in the when it was right. just getting cold out yep. there. So, um, so, well, th I think that uh, I if I have my bearing on this right, <clears throat> your next show is going to be a composite. It'll involve different people. Um, are there any? Are th is there anyone in particular that you could tell us about that you you know that uh, that's coming up on that show? Yeah, well, um, I have a friend who has a medical marijuana license and agreed to let us come to his place and um, check out his growing operation. He grows plants for his um, medicinal use, and um, we, we got sort of the tour and the how-to, and it's really interesting, <clears throat> and um, he was very open about the whole thing. He's very interested in seeing marijuana become at least decriminalized, and the, the fact that he even though he has a license and a card, doesn't mean that it's all free and clear for him. He has to, you know, behave like a criminal, really, in order for him to get his medicine to function in society. So I he was very generous in, 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 in opening up his home, his grow space for us to, you know, to look at and share his knowledge. That's fascinating. And he does go through, I think he goes through the whole, does he go through the whole process? I mean, like how many plants you're allowed. And, yes. And how many you can have in the flowering stage and how many yep. you can have in the veg stage. And that's good. I find that to be very interesting. And, um, and there may be folks that, that will be watching that may find <clears throat> it interesting because um, there are more people now with that medical marijuana card and quite a few in this area that I've run into now that we do this show. I am learning more and more about that. Yeah. Well, he uh, said also. something very interesting is that if he wasn't using marijuana, he would have a real problem because he would be on a pharmaceutical drug um, like Klonopin or something like that. And he says that on Klonopin, he cannot function. And so he uses marijuana so he can function in society, whereas a lot of other people might use it recreationally to get away from stuff. He uses it so he can actually join the human race. Yeah. 
That's interesting. And, and yeah. I think they're going to find that uh, marijuana does have, I mean, it, they already are. That's why in the state of Vermont we passed medical marijuana. We mm -hmm. have found out that it is a drug that can actually help people. Uh, the myth that it's this bad thing and all these people doing crazy things is just that. It's a myth. Sure, and uh, there's, there's a man up in um, Canada, perhaps you've heard of him, Rick Simpson, who's dispensing cannabis oil to cancer patients and really um, getting high success rates of curing cancer. And of course they want to shut him down too. Well the government well, years ago would pay, they, they were actually funding marijuana research. But what was happening is the research was coming back and people, you can actually discover this on your own. Don't believe what I'm just telling you. If you want to actually go out there and get on the internet and find this stuff out, you'll find out that this is the truth. Because um, a lot of people think that, you know, we've been smoking or something and we come up with this stuff out of the blue. Right. But it isn't that way. And so the government stopped funding the research unless you had a negative. Okay, so if you were coming up with a negative when this one guy who, who actually our producer up in the booth uh, turned me on to this article, <laughs> where this one guy thought for sure that it would cause lung cancer at a higher rate than people who smoke cigarettes, and this was done in the 70s, um, and he was one of the only people being funded by the government, and then what ends up happening, he comes out and says, you know what, I'm wrong, they're right. Mm. You know, the, 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 uh, the, I met the first medical marijuana <clears throat> fellow for Glaucoma, um, and at one of the conferences that we went to, he was allowed, and to this day, I believe, um, <clears throat> was able to sit there and light up. And in those days, they would still have a cigarette break for, at the conference, at the, at, the, at the tabling that we had, and he could <clears throat> light up uh, while, while uh, they were, um, you know, smoking cigarettes. And the issue of funding, by the way, you're, 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 you, ha you, know, you have a good point there. Most of it has ceased. And uh, except for, I think, the glaucoma cases, I'm not sure. Um, it, it, and I think we still have uh, three or four uh, glaucoma medical marijuana patients who still use mm -hmm. uh, federal marijuana uh, as, a, as a part of the program. Well, didn't the former president once <laughs> use... THC to help his um, problem? I think he did. George Bush. I mean, he used it for glaucoma and, you know, so. Uh, George probably used it for a, a number of things, but um, <laughs> but uh, like to come down from from uh, too much cocaine or something. I can oh, no, say the that. first Bush. Oh, the old fellow? Yeah, the old fellow. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, then we then they both used it. If that's the if that's the both. In fact, the whole thing about presidents using uh, using marijuana has really turned into something of a joke. I mean, in all reality, um, you have you have Obama who who was quoted as saying that you know <clears throat> when I smoked, I inhaled frequently. That was the point of it. You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 now his uh, attorney general Holder is and him are really behind the raids in California where um, the dispensary bills are passed. So we have a dispensary bill in uh, Vermont. Vermont passed in 2004 the medical marijuana law. Left it lay fallow for all of those years and in 2011 finally passed the dispensary uh, bill which <clears throat> would allow folks like the subject on your next film of uh, your next video for the things we can't talk about to do what you know what he's doing um, to have it to have it legally accessible to him in one way or the other. Um, what's your what's what's your personal take on on um, marijuana and how you know in terms of you know you've been a resident you know, you're a resident here for a long mm -hmm. time. I mean, do you? I mean. You know, and you and you, we all know people in and out of the system. I mean, is it such a horrible thing that that we, you know, that we can't get the legislature to decriminalize it? I, I'm amazed, really. I mean, we're looking at something that's way less worse than alcohol. I mean, if you want to talk about something bad, you know, what about cigarettes? What about alcohol, which causes cancer, which causes, you know, organ failure, which causes. Um, crashes which causes you know alcoholics and broken up families and all kinds of stuff like that marijuana doesn't have that kind of effect i mean it leads to carpentry and you know perhaps overeating and creative ideas and and you know and maybe doing nothing if it's applied <laughs> wrong 
but it's that's like that's right there thank you for saying that everybody's got the misconception that you smoke a joint you're going to be sitting on uh, uh, you know well, that's not if you overdo it you might sure, be sure it's like but it's a like medicine anything. but it's like a medicine if you if you take too much you know whatever yeah. good medicine is out there then then yeah it's, it's going to be an adverse reaction well by the way i don't mind sitting around doing <laughs> nothing i have that's to me that's not an issue and marijuana uh, is not is not a medicine um i will uh, tell people who are listening that shumlin has agreed to sign any bills related to medical marijuana because he's in favor of that but he also reiterated which we should be interested in that uh, he will also <clears throat> continue his support for decriminalization and that was a very important and he did that I think just recently last week and we really needed that that type of um, of a statement from him because uh, he's been kind of low-key and of course the governor has uh, many things uh, in his first year to accomplish. So we're hoping that that, uh, that Governor Shumlin, uh, who we hope listens to our well, show, I think, will. I, I think if they do decrim it, um, it will definitely lead to an economic boom in this area because there's a <laughs> lot of people who grow it, a lot of people who use it, and there's a big market for it. I mean, it, it's good for lots of things, and um, the fact that it's, it's illegal is insane because we're talking about something that grows out of the ground well, the first economic yeah. boom is going to come from the uh, from the tickets that marijuana users would get instead of a uh, instead of a jail sentence, uh, and that and that's going to be the that's going to be the most important thing, and it will lead to exactly what you're talking about. It, I mean, there is no question that. Well, it would save you $52 million approximately using the state's figures. It would save you approximately $52 million a year out of the prison system alone. That's exactly. Which is a $140 million budget. Now, right. with Irene, and you talk about the governor, he's going to have a lot on the plate. Well, they're yes. going to be dealing with Irene an awful lot this session, I, I believe. And what I've been reading is the bill is probably going to come under just under $100 million. Well, just think if you went further uh, beyond decriminalizing <coughs> and made it legal. Mm -hmm. and made the people who smoke it have to pay a tax, okay? <laughs> you are going to help your budget immensely. E e e Not only are you going to save on one side, you're going to be increasing on the other side. And to me, this is such a no-brainer. Right. And then go back to what you were talking about. You want to know why? You can't get some of the legislators to get on board. And, and the, um, <laughs> when I was talking to them about the, the medical marijuana mm -hmm. aspect and trying to go further, we would be discussing this at the Thrush Tavern okay which is now closed my colleagues i do, don't drink and most people know that around here my colleagues do okay mm. a lot of them did and, and that's fine okay sure. i don't have anything against that you pick yours i think it's awful and for all the reasons you said that i work at the hospital and we've already heard all the reasons but when they left after three or four hours of discussion I, I had a problem with that, you know. Yeah, right. I mean, there were several of us, and we we were talking for a while, and they're all sitting there telling me the gateway drug was uh, was uh, marijuana. Well, you know what? For me, folks, the gateway drug was alcohol. I started with alcohol. I went to all the heavy stuff, and then I went to marijuana to stop me from doing all the other stuff because the other stuff was killing me. Of course, you can so. find your gateway drugs right under your mother's kitchen sink. Yeah. Well, the we, fact yeah. that this society needs drugs is. is the way the society is structured that people feel that they have to go for a drug, whatever it is, you know, nicotine or caffeine or, or, or marijuana, or sugar or whatever, you know, it's like, well, why is that then? Why do people feel that they have to reach out and get something to get out of this reality? Well, do you think possibly then it's because we're, it, it's, a, it's a natural process for us to use drugs? I mean, it would, it would I mean, do you think so? Well, they've been used for thousands of years. And thousands of years. So, no. so we're, we're not doing anything today that wasn't done thousands of years no. ago. No. Uh, and uh, I'd, I'd be willing to bet it was done as soon as me and took that first whatever and found out he did something different to his uh, right. to his body and the way he felt. They right. were probably, hey, this isn't bad, try this or whatever. And possibly even ate it originally before smoking processes came in because you can deliver, the marijuana and the effects of it can be delivered to you by, by, by eating it also. Mm -hmm. um, One of the other things that I wanted to uh, get Dan's opinion on here too is, and, and you brought a lot of things up already, but um, you know when you hear the commercials about pick a drug <laughs> you know and they come on and they and they give you the scoop and they got the nice picture of the 
the flow and metal and a couple people walking through and then here comes the side effects and mm -hmm. the guy comes on and talks a hundred miles an hour mm -hmm. and gives you a list of this yeah. well I'd like to tell folks out there the side effects I mean different side effects you know different things affect people differently but man those aren't natural <laughs> and like you went back to where this thing is this is a natural natural form everything else we're given is man-made uh, I don't know. It just it just blows me away how we have been brainwashed when mm -hmm. it comes to this drug over the past 60 years. Because well, this wasn't even yeah. talked about in the 30s. I think that you know the pharmaceutical business has is a, is a huge business, and then they get their way, and and yeah. and they they put on a commercial, and they can reach millions of people, if not billions of people, and say, hey, do you feel nervous at a party or, or whatever? And you know, nine times out of ten. Say, oh yeah, I do feel nervous at a party. I mean, who doesn't, right? There might be some people that I never heard of. Well, you can take this pill, and and you'll feel better at a party, and you'll fit in, and forget about the side effects, because you know you'll probably have a drug for that. Yeah. So it's like you know, <laughs> it's it's that culture that we live in, though, that people just go for a pill to to re to you know relieve their 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 symptoms of anything, and they don't look at any deeper psychological stuff like, you know, uh, or anything else. They just quickly go to, oh, I'll just take this pill, and I'm better. Dan, we got people that come to the hospital, and mostly elderly, though, because they got to bring in their drugs, mm. because, you know, you don't know if the doctor needs all that, and I'm not kidding <coughs> you. You would be shocked if you saw some of the medicines subscribe. They may, and this is, I'm not kidding you, there could be a dozen to 15 to 18 prescribed pill canisters in that bag. And I, the first thing I look at, I, I look at the doc that's sitting there, the ER doc, and go, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? And you haven't even necessarily mentioned what we do to children. Oh, because, yeah. Oh, because we're, 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 we're pill popping them yep. yeah. big time. Changing their whole way of their, their brain functioning now, too, and stuff. I mean, And a recent article really highlighted yeah. that, that, that it's increasing, not decreasing. Yeah. It is. Pills for kids. I couldn't imagine. You know, and part of it is related to the fact that some parents, I'm not blaming all parents, but a lot of parents would rather pop a pill for a kid than, than to actually Spend sit down with them and, 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 and uh, help to direct all of that nervous energy sure. that they have. Um, it's, the same, it's the same way when they just plop a kid in front of a TV so they don't have to deal thing. with the kid. Same thing, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, and you could say that television is like a drug. I mean, there are people I would who say are that. addicted yes. to television. They can't stop watching television. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are some shows you... you yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, you know. yeah BC <laughs> TV. If you've got it on BC TV, do not turn off your television. <clears throat> Get Wait for our BC show, TV. Marijuana Resolve, <laughs> and dance. <laughs> yeah, BC TV's cool, you know. Yeah. And we really do mean that. This is a good station, and this station as a public access station. Well, that's the difference. Really it's, does allow us to sit here like this and do what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, and so does uh, so do the public radio stations that are also public access. <laughs> They're really an important component of being able to talk about things that you normally wouldn't talk about. And uh, and I have to tell you, a lot of us here in Brattleboro are delighted that 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 you founded the things you can't talk about programming. And I um, am looking forward to that first show. <clears throat> and it'll be interesting. I think it's the second show that they. Oh, that it'll they, be your second. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm also interested in what your feedback will be from the public <laughs> after you've done that, because I can tell you, as somebody who sat here and took a gamble, because you know what it's like if you talk about. Marijuana. I mean, yeah. people do. It's a stigma. And if you're supposed to be one of these yeah. people in the community that is uh, is politically involved, then that probably makes you a bad person if you're doing something like that. So, I mean, when I came out and talked about what I did and why, and why I think it would be helpful for the state to legalize it, um, you took it a hell was of a amazing yes. to me yes. how many people in high places, if you want to call them that, Okay, that are worried about their reputation said thank you, keep going. Right. But don't want to get their, you know, they would never come on the show because yeah. they would ruin them. There's a lot of fear. I mean, you can sum up all this stuff. I mean, but it's okay if your name's in the paper for right. being drunk. All right. You know? <laughs> but oh, I mean, well. <laughs> but, but I'm just saying, like, like, you can sum up all the stuff that we talk about, like, and things you can't talk about as, as why they don't talk about it is fear. Yeah. They're afraid of their position. And, like, even if you have no position, well, 
geez, if you talk about drugs, say that you use drugs or whatever it is that you talk about that's banned from society, you're not going to be able to get a job. Yeah. And if you have a job and you say it, you're going to lose your job. You know, that's the fear. Or what, uh, what is everybody going to say? Instead of speaking out for what's right, they're all afraid of what people are going to say. Imagine if, you know, people like Martin Luther King <clears throat> or Gandhi had said, oh, my God, what are people going to think if I go around saying that we should all be free and equal? Yeah. You know, it's like none of that stuff would ever gotten off the ground. And these people are just afraid to do anything. And it goes for wherever, you know, whatever um, walk of life that, that you, that you contact can, with, they're afraid. This issue right here, and I tagged this issue with hemp, could be so beneficial mm. to this country <coughs> in a state that is unbelievable. Yep. Jobs, taxes, the, I mean, at a time when we need it, that I cannot believe the people, the movers <coughs> and shakers aren't starting to put this on the table. Well, look, look at this. Larry, uh, La Larry Block is closing the uh, Save the Corporations from Themselves. And really, the biggest reason is because we don't have a hemp industry in this state, even though, once again, the legislature mm -hmm. passed, you know, the legalization, yep. so-called, of hemp. They, they, they don't provide the provisions. Now, to the credit of the legislature, part of the provisioning that they need to do uh, for marijuana and hemp is how do they butt heads with the feds? Mm -hmm. That's the most difficult that any thing that any legis state legislature is facing. Um, and as Eric Holder and, and Obama has shown to us, they're willing to go in and to a state and raid it, even though that state has decided that our dispensaries are legal, our hemp is legal. But it, but it, but if anyone in the state attempts to do it, they're going, they're going to, they're, you know, they're going to be raided. Well, Larry Block closed his business, because, really, in good part, because we don't have an industry here. If we had hemp growing here, and he was tied into a manufacturing and distribution process, right? It would, it would give more, it would give more jobs all around. People would be willing to, um, you know, it would affect the pricing of it. People would be willing to go into the store. And, uh, and, and it's a good product. The people that good, do buy that from there <coughs> say they're good. Their shirts are they last. They're high I mean, quality, a, uh, every, comfortable. And, right. And he and and it's a shame because it it's an important store. So really, the 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 impact <coughs> all all down and across the board is what's really preventing us from from doing what we should be doing. However, talking about it is a good step. Um, and I, I and, and and I think that. Um, that we need to do more of that, and I, I, and so we'll say once again that that Dan Lefkowitz, um, who is the uh, basically the producer of things you you can't talk about, is having a show coming up on BCTV, um, and uh, it'll be in the probably Channel Eight listing. Do you think so? Yeah. Do you? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So you can look out for that. Um, it'll be it'll be informative and and certainly entertaining. And th we want to thank Wayne right here for letting Dan and uh, Chris and Lee sit to uh, his home to do that because I, I am looking forward to, to seeing that. And, and hopefully uh, that will be educational for other people who are running around yeah. trying to figure out how the heck the people who got the card, how do I get it? Yeah. You know, because really we <laughs> turned a lot of people who had a card into, you know, they had to go purchase it illegally. Too. Right. Well, the problem in, 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 for medical marijuana people is that they have limited illnesses that you can apply for, and they have a limited number of cards, and they're going to have a limited number of dispensaries. So everything is yeah. based on limit, limiting everything that's going on there, which is kind of ridiculous. So if they set, if they set the, the top line that there can only be 4,000 patients in Vermont, but yet there are 5,300 of them... <laughs> Who would make a decision that 1,300 of them are not going to be eligible for medical marijuana just because the legislature made up a magic number? The same thing is true with... Well, that's the magic number, but you can get a waiver. There's a thing called a waiver. If they hit the, if they hit the 4,000 mark right. and you needed it and you were number 4,001, you can get a waiver. I don't know how you do the process, but you can... So the, a, a waiver, waiver that would take... So that, that would say you're in. Okay. Now, by the way, um, I want to point out to, to our listeners here that um, not everybody agrees with uh, marijuana and the medicalization of it. All of us agree that marijuana can and should be used, if a person desires, as a medicine. 
but but that's not but 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 the medicalization of it which brings you <coughs> big pharma that you mentioned a little while ago is a very bad move in this country and i was talking to russ Belleville from normal today. Oh, did you get the apples? And uh, and <laughs> Russ said, "Tell Daryl, thank you for the Vermont <laughs> apples because his wife is allergic to uh, apples because of the things that they put on them." And you sent him organic apples, and he said that was really great. So yeah. R Russ Belleville and his wife gets to enjoy Vermont apples, and they're in Portland, um, Oregon. Um, and but anyway, I was talking with Russ about the medicalization of marijuana. And he agreed with me that years ago, he also was speaking out, don't do this. You're going to box yourself into a corporatocracy. You're going to involve too much licensing and, and doctor this and, and, and pharmacy that. And, um, and I was really surprised and glad to hear, to hear him say that. So the bottom line is people who want to use marijuana for medicine can do so under decriminalization and also legalization. You don't really need to go through the whole medicalization of it in order to do that. Yeah. Um, so <coughs> I was very glad to hear Shumlin say that he's interested um, in reiterating his support for decriminalization. Which, and we've talked about this on the show. Which is and, our, our, and our focus. That's for, our focus, for, but for right. me personally, I just want to make it legal. For everybody, because yes. I right. personally would like to be, see marijuana be used as, you know, I, if I want to smoke a joint instead of having a glass of sherry, uh, that's right. then I would like you, to be able to do exactly. that. Exactly. We never right. sit here and advocate for anybody under the age of 21. Matter right. of fact, I'd be against that. And we don't even advocate people smoking or drinking no. at all. All, all we're your, saying, your, which, is what, choice, which is what sure. you would say as well, Dan, which is, you know, we need this available to us, and that's not what we're getting. Um, so, uh, you know. And we can help alleviate some of the other problems problems that it's causing exactly so I think, I think we as a people need to you know take our our inherent god-given rights back I mean we're talking yeah, about like all these occupied <laughs> movements going on around the country mm -hmm. you can say occupy marijuana you know occupy mm -hmm. you can name a subject that we need to occupy it's it's the same thing with you know house foreclosures and and um, banks and, 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 and everything is all connected the whole system needs to come down and the, the fact that marijuana is illegal is part of the whole system. Well, in that case, then, you are referring to corporatocracy because our system is based on corporate everything. Uh, everything. Whether I mean, it's they're, military, they're, government, uh, they're products. They're considered individuals call now. It what you, call, call it what you want to call it. Right. It just, it just we, needs to come down. Exactly. We've got about a minute left. Exactly. Here. Well, we, we, then I, I, I think we should reiterate again that, that uh, Dan Lefkowitz, our guest today on Marijuana Resolve, <laughs> it has uh, a program coming up called Things You Can't Talk About, and that program topic will be marijuana also. We want you to tune in and listen, and uh, on behalf of Daryl Pillsbury and myself as co-host of Marijuana Resolve Show, we'd like to thank Dan uh, and, and invite him back sometime, but t tune in for things you can't talk about. Tell them about our website. Our website, which runs on the bottom of our screen here, is marijuanaresolve.org. Two words, easy to remember, dot org. Uh, look some things up, try to make your own decisions, and help the legislature and help us to focus on decriminalizing marijuana in the state of Vermont. Thank you. Thanks.